All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, on the show, live at Denver Comic Con, we have Ian McGinty. Uh, he's been on the show before. Uh, his creator co creator owned comic welcome to show side has a pilot out on his website that features the dulcet tones of henry rollins <laughs> uh <It does. laughs> which i had totally forgotten about when oh, i yeah. went to watch the pilot i, I forget sometimes. and then when he started talking i was like oh holy shit that's henry rollins yeah no i'm still not really sure how he pulled that off yeah it's amazing be honest with you um, um but yeah. you also work uh, with Boom Comics, doing Adventure Time yeah. and a lot of the other like kid cartoons. Yeah, I do. I do my focus right now, and uh, it's been exciting. And you know, we can talk about it in a minute. I've been branching out um, some more into some less kind of all ages territory. But yeah, for the most part, I'm the lead comic artist on Adventure Time right now. Uh, prior to that, I was on Bravest Warriors, which is kind of a spinoff of Adventure Time, but more like sci-fi based. Um, and I just do a lot of like uh, comics and art and media stuff sort of based off of an animated TV series. Right. Um, and it's just been like the best time ever for it because there's so many just great shows out there like Steven Universe and, you know, Clarence and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Bailey's input there is woo. Yeah. Like, that's, that's generally the, imp that's what I get. You know, nice. So. so like, I, I have to admit that I, like I had given Adventure Time a shot many, many times. Right. Like watching it on TV. I'd watch the first probably like two or three episodes at least six or seven times. I was like, I just don't get it. <laughs> like, this is clearly for kids. I'm dumb. Yeah. I'm just too old. I'm not hip. And then one of my friends was like, you know, sit down and watch like the first like 10 episodes. And I, yeah. I pushed my way through it. <laughs> and by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, I want to watch all of these. This is ridiculous and amazing and hilarious. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a trip to say the least. And what's funny is that when you get kind of hired on for these projects you actually don't have the time anymore to actually watch <laughs> what it's based <laughs> off of so i got up to about like season three and i really haven't seen much else but i hear so much from everybody else what it's about so um, which is great so one thing that's kind of always fascinated me about about you know the so it used to be when comic books were tied to like a TV show or a movie or something, they were like straight adaptations. Yeah. Usually, like earlier yeah. today, we were talking to Andy Mangles who did like child's play three and it's literally <laughs> child's play three done as a comic, Just as book, a comic you know? book. Yeah. So you're not doing that. Like you're doing original content based around like, you know, adventure time, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Are um, there ever, yeah. are there ever moments where you write, you know, or your writer on the story mm -hmm. accidentally makes something that's too similar to an episode and you have to like scrap things because it's too close to the TV show as I mean, as of yet, that's not happened, but a lot of that's cause we do have editors it's going to happen now. Who are, yeah, maybe who knows? <laughs> but what we, what we find that happens more often than not actually lately is they'll take the show. will take elements from the comic huh. and use it in the series. Um, like a small example of this would be bravest warriors. Uh, they made uh, a Funko toy line based off of a character I created in Bravest Warriors. Nice. And then, uh, which it was like a Funko Pop or something like that. Right. And then uh, War to 3A, who is like the coolest action figure cre creation company ever, also did one for Emerald City Comic Con a couple years ago. So that happens a lot more often than that. But like basically the way I usually describe it is the comics sort of take place in between the episodes. Oh, okay. But it's all wholly original stuff. So... so. So when you're when you're looking at like merchandising and stuff, I accidentally asked Ben Templesmith this question one time, and it got like a forty five minute answer. It was amazing. But so when you're looking at like a Funko Pop, obviously isn't going to look like your art, you know. Right. Right. But when you see like toys and things like that that are based on things that you've created, like art that you've done, do you ever want to like just go up to the guy that like modeled the toy and be like, "You did that wrong. Like I hate you." I'm, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in a phase where I'm just amazed that anybody wants anything to do with my art at all. So I'm just so I'm usually just like you do you, man. Because I mean it's trippy even being, uh, you know, at a comic convention like we are right now, and you're walking past like you know an artist who's done print space of a character that you created, and oh, that, that has it's got it to really, be really messes weird. with your head. Like it really does mess with your head. But I'm really into that kind of like different interpretations of characters that like I've worked on or created or whatever and stuff like that. So I think it's awesome. So I'm all about, I used to hate it just because it was so like, whoosh, whoosh, like so weird, you know, and your brain is just like, but that's my thing. You know, <laughs> like you can't have that. That's, that's, you know, whatever. And now I'm just, now that I'm kind of at a point in my career where it's like, I don't have to like worry so much about being like the shark, you know, the shark in the tank trying to like 
bustle my way my way in and you know this and that whatever i can kind of sit back and relax a little bit like you know i've worked on a bunch of stuff lately and this and that now i really enjoy kind of being like oh it's cool they did that so it's even cool like coming up to your booth just now like you you have like gaggles of people yeah, like coming yeah, up to great. your booth you know going from you know like you said where it's still a little surprising that people are interested even interested yeah, in it's your always art. like I, like i have that i had that moment like two days ago we got invited to be on a, a radio show oh nice and the lady that invited us on like fangirled on us i was like <laughs> what the that's fuck cool. is going yeah, on that's right, right. Now? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's cool so so when you know when you're getting that you're getting that fandom that's coming at you and saying oh my god i love you so much yeah. this is so great yeah. like y- you seem like a fairly outgoing person like do you feel like you deal with those situations well or do you get a little yeah tense. <laughs> i mean well you're always gonna get tense i mean i get tense in the grocery store you know what i mean like i'm true. always tense i'm just i'm always like on edge or whatever but a big a big part of like i think that you know i generally i, I do well at these cons and like i have a you know i i like to think that i do well at cons and it's, it's usually pretty rare that i it's slow right you know what i mean not that adventure time is like a hard thing to sell because it's right. not it's very easy but uh but yeah no it's just like um I spent a good majority of my like childhood and teen years and young adult years playing music, um, which selling comics at a booth is basically exactly the same as like being in the back at the of a merch dark table bar, like trying to sell your merch. Yeah, been there. So I've that's <laughs> I had you had you had to like you have to learn how to talk to people and draw people in without being an obnoxious dick. Which I never figured out that second part. It's harder than it sounds. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's harder than it sounds because those are the guys you always see at the you know at San Diego or New York just like barking at people to buy stuff. And I don't you know I'm not I don't not all about that. Like, right. Those guys, yeah, not not my thing at all. But yeah, no, I mean I'm always on edge, and people who know me know I'm always like I'm always stressed out about something. But I'm learning to live with it. <laughs> so, coming from like being in bands and stuff, like what what do you think you learned? You know, besides what we just talked about, like, what do you think you learned best being in a band that has translated best into being a comic book artist? Uh, I mean, besides the, you know, talking to fans and and which it really does help because it's very similar. What I I guess the whole like being in a band was we were a horrible screamo band in like the mid 2000s. We were called Julian Gallows and we were like sort of popular in the East Coast for a while and this and that, whatever, and almost got a record deal. But it kind of fell through just because we were all young and. Stupid, you know, stupid, and we <laughs> thought we were too good for blah blah blah, this and that, whatever. Mainly, this, the things I learned that apply to this is basically like, don't do all the dumb shit I did in the band. Being like, try to be nice, try to be cool with everybody all the time. Don't you know, go crazy about very small things. In the end, it really doesn't matter. And then just to kind of like, you know, for example, let's say a venue wants your band to play, right? They're going out of their way to bring you out and maybe even pay you if you're lucky and stuff like that, which translates directly to conventions like this where these people are paying for me to fly out and put them up in a hotel. So always be nice to the behind the scenes people. Exactly. <laughs> even if they tell you hand carts are prohibited. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. And, and, and it really wasn't even that big a deal. We just hung outside for a while and yeah. you just went and finally somebody got us. But yeah, I definitely learned like, like bands always make friends with the sound guy. Right, because you know he I mean? is the key he's the guy who's going to make you sound, sound good, a- awesome, yeah. or the or the, t- well, the guy I mean, at the door, like besides your actual musical. Well, talent. we were horrible, so uh, that doesn't matter. But like, that's same, okay. Same I was deal. Like, always be nice like, to the ever. yeah, <laughs> like always be nice to the staff people. Like it's just it's it's that kind of stuff that like should be obvious, you know, for sure. Just like any job, kind of. But you do like sometimes you forget that. Oh, I mean, this is a job. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. I get to draw funny books all day, but it's still a job. So. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, welcome to show side a little sure. bit. Uh, kind of what's the status of the the project on you know the comic book side and sure. then like on the on the uh, cartoon side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so we did the we did the comic, and I think between the last time I talked to you, the trade came out, which collects yes. all the comics and it has some extra stuff and some bonus material in there, like some process stuff, which is nice. And the pilot, like just today, I believe hit. Over eight hundred thousand views. Oh, which wow. has been really great. Yeah, it's definitely... I didn't even bother to look at that number. I was just like, yeah. oh man, I totally forgot to watch this like two months ago. <laughs> so <laughs> it blew up, and <laughs> I was talking to. I actually called my publisher at like two o'clock in the morning last night um, to talk about this interview. Uh, so I'm sort of <laughs> because I'm limited on what I can say. Right. Um, what I can say is that the pilot was received very well by a certain animation company certain entities yes yeah, certain certain named. entities which cannot be named. illuminati confirmed yeah <laughs> and uh i wish <laughs> and uh and and talks 
things are in the works to move on to the next step is nice. what i'll say that's yeah. awesome yeah hey that may seem vague but that says a lot there's like, only yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know it's kind of cool being able to talk to people that are in the process of creating something really sure. really awesome like um you know i i don't think we recorded this little bit right before we started talking but you know since the last time I talked to you, I had completely spaced that you had Henry Rollins as right, one of the right, voices in, right. in the episode. So I'm watching it and the little floating skull demon comes <laughs> up French, and then yeah. Henry Rollins' voice comes out. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. and I, I feel like, you know, that that kind of slow burn process and not knowing what's going on and like, you know, kind of stumbling back into it. It, it feels cool. It's like it. Knowing that you can't tell me puts me on edge and excited to know more right. for the next time, you know, I yeah. talk to you, the next time you post on Facebook about it or something yeah. like that. Yeah, no, it's I, been cool. I mean, like, I know I can say that, like, we're definitely in the works to do another comic series um, with all those characters. I le- we want to. Nice. So, you know, that, that's definitely, like, being discussed, but it all sort of hinges on some other things. So that's kind of where we are right now. So when you're bored... Like, and you know, you're just kind of sitting at home. You're like, oh man, I just want to sketch, but I don't want to sketch. Like, I don't want to sketch Steven Universe. <laughs> right, I don't yeah, want to yeah. sketch Adventure Time. Like, what what do you like to draw when you're not drawing like the stuff you have to draw? So like, I'll be completely honest with you here. And this is, this is sort of blasphemous and I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for it. But like, that's <laughs> what this show's all about. Because, <laughs> because art is my job right now um, and writing and, and doing all that kind of stuff, like, when I when in the few instances where I do have free time, I generally don't draw, you know, because I try to treat everything as if it's like a job. So like the Welcome to Show Side stuff was all my fully all my characters and things like that, but I treated it like I Work. want to get this yeah. done. I got to get this thing in the can. I want to pitch it out and do it because for me, like the phys- this is why I don't do a ton of commissions at conventions and things like that. I do them for like fans who you know are obviously have gone out of their way to like come and be cool and things like that and i like doing that but like the physical the physical act of drawing and all that kind of stuff is not that enjoyable to be honest it's it's hard it's work you know, it's yeah. work it's just like any job so for me it's like when i in the few times i do have downtime i try to focus on like maybe other avenues of like be that music or reading books or just chilling out like i do a lot of writing in my downtime instead of drawing just because they're completely different ways to think right um but yeah i mean like you know but then again i can't <laughs> Sketching is what makes the ideas for, you know, what could potentially be a new series as well. You right. Know what I mean? So I like any given time I've got about like five different books sort of like cooking right now. So like I'm actually we're going to have a big announcement on Thursday about a book that's coming out um, from me and Samuel Satin, uh, who did Legend with Z2. And uh, so that that announcement is coming out. And behind that, there's a bunch of other announcements, some really cool new series with Boom Studios and things like that. Nice. And that's what I was saying earlier is I'm also trying to branch out a little more into not all ages stuff. Right. So I've been getting to do some Marvel covers lately, which has been really cool. Oh, that is cool. It's been really fun. And then this series that I was talking about with Samuel Satin is sort of it's it's more of a teen kind of, you know, level book. Um, It has death and and things like it deals with these aliens and people all this get hurt stuff. And people stuff. get hurt and, and what's cool about this one i'm excited about this one too because they it's say a, butt yeah they say, <laughs> they say gosh darn it <laughs> gosh darn it this one's gonna be fun too because the characters age in real time which oh, is okay. gonna be really interesting that is cool. um and they're not human which is gonna be really interesting to see like how how we're gonna figure all that out but. it's it's interesting uh we just did a diversity in comics panel that, nice. that i moderated and uh two of the people that were on the panel talking about you know what they're kind of like idealized if you could pick one comic book out of the air that you felt embodied diversity the best two sure. of them talked about love and rocket oh yeah yeah and yeah. how love and it's rocket is like as the as time goes on the comics moving in real time so yeah three years of time go by the characters of age three years yeah so like, i think it's great first issue too. of yeah. love of rock is she's like 17 now she's like it's 40, later you know? yeah it's kind of cool it's, it's great I, I really like that kind of stuff and i i do it's interesting to me how a lot of these very inclusive books that are including, you know, not just white guys, basically, right. is what it comes down to. A lot of them are all ages books, yeah. which I find, which I've been finding really fascinating. So, like, again, we're talking about Boom Studios. You know, they have all these lumberjanes and all these great books that are just very cool. And it's like, to me, reflects more the real world. I, th- I thought it was interesting. That's one of the things uh, Dan Parent, who uh, writes for Archie Comics, that's what he said, introducing the first gay character yeah, into yeah, Archie yeah, comics yeah, yeah. he said was an easy sell because kids don't care that he's gay yeah they just care that he's interested yeah you're not taught like, like hate you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, like well you some are some people you're are taught but, hate you're not born hate but those I people like are think. awful yeah 
They're, uh, yeah, they suck. <laughs> I was about to say something about the president, but I kept it inside. Ah, <laughs> I have to do a panel for kids after this, so don't get me started. Yeah. You'd be like, I just got off this interview, and yeah. you know what? <laughs> Listen up, kids. <laughs> Our president's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they know. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows. I think they know. Uh, I'm going oh, back. Stop. Back on track. Yeah, back on track. Yeah, yeah. Let's rein that train. I, Juan's going to yell at me. <laughs> so, um, so I've been thinking about it, like, and this is a this is a question I thought it would be, you know, fun to ask. You do a ton of, you know, franchised kids comics, okay? Yes. There are a Too ton. Many. There are a ton of cartoons out there that are like not for kids. Metalocalypse, Rick and Morty. Oh yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. If you could pick one cartoon <laughs> not for kids to just go to town write draw have a blast with which would which would you yeah pick? that's oh that's really tough um so here's so like it's super funny i've been i always thought it would be cool to do um uh oh god what was it i've i've this is so stupid like i can't even believe i'm gonna admit this i've always wanted to do an american dad comic <laughs> <laughs> Why is that stupid? Because I find it Roger the Alien to be like the funniest thing. Just like ever. a Roger spinoff book. Just something just <laughs> ridiculous about that. Um, and so, which is funny because like I don't really, I don't, I really dislike Seth MacFarlane's other stuff except for like this one specific show. And uh, shout out to Katie Farina because I think she's the only other person who likes the show <laughs> with, um, uh, with me. But uh, the big one is I would love to do a King of the Hill comic. Oh man. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. You just spoke my language yeah. right there. <laughs> that's like probably my favorite show ever. My wife, or uh, my wife, my kids, my, my and wife. I, my wife. My boy, the wife. <laughs> we talked about doing uh, for our 69th episode an entire episode about sex and Borat voices. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think it would put off pretty much all of our listeners. <laughs> that might be it, the last and episode. And it makes me want to do it really bad. But uh, <laughs> uh, my kids sat down in front of Netflix and every moment that I came upstairs or home from work or whatever, <laughs> they were plowing through yeah, you just every put them on single like episode great. of King of the Hill. They're great to fall asleep to. So. Oh, yeah. It's such a good show. Now, speaking of American Dad, that, that's what my wife did. She binge watched all of American yeah. Dad and she would just fall asleep to I it. I love them. Wake up, rewind what they're she so fell trippy. asleep. <laughs> they're so trippy and they're not like, it's not like Family Guy where it's mean spirited. It's just weird. It's just weird. Yeah. It's just which very I really, weird. And I really, I have this like bizarre like obsession with uh with uh francine and klaus's relationship <laughs> and then steve's singing voice <laughs> it's awesome which is amazing oh man well i know you have a lot of stuff to do uh ian we w really want to thank you for being on yeah the show. absolutely uh it when you have if you have a big announcement about <laughs> welcome to show yeah, side yeah. And cartoon yes we would love to have you back it's, on to uh, talk all about yeah, it yeah definitely definitely and uh sooner than later <laughs> nice well yeah as soon as you hear about it hit one up and we'll put cool. you on so. cool sounds good yeah awesome. awesome well thank you so much ian <laughs> absolutely